1 Kings chapter number 17, verse number 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Again, bless it, I pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help us today to rightly divide the word of truth. God, forgive me of my sin, I pray. And God, help me as I stand behind this pulpit. God, that I declare the word of God, Lord, without fault and without failure, God, of the word of God, I pray. Help us now, God, we need you. Lord, I'm nothing without thee and can do nothing without thy power. And we pray, God, the Spirit of God would lead us today. Bless everyone that's here. Should there be someone here that doesn't know you, I pray that you touch them with the Spirit of God that they might come to know you. If there's someone discouraged today, Lord, I pray that you'd help them. Lord, we'll thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Title our message today, Please Make Me a Biscuit. Please make me a biscuit. Now, I just happened to have to stop by Bojangles this morning to buy this biscuit. Amen. I just bought this biscuit and another one, but I bought this biscuit. I had to stop there anyway, and I don't like to waste a trip to Bojangles, all right? So somebody, please make me a biscuit. Now, that's a strange title for a message, but I do that this morning hoping you'll never forget the message. Amen. Please make me a biscuit. Now, we studied Elijah, been there a couple of weeks now, and we know Elijah, regrouping just a little bit, we know that Elijah was, number one, he was guided by the Lord. He was guided, He comes on the scene, God says, you go before Ahab and tell Ahab it's not going to rain. And so his guidance was of the Lord. When he got through telling Ahab that it wasn't going to rain, He then God said, you go hide thyself by the brook Cherith. And so he went and... There he went by the brook Cherith. And then God uh, guided him to leave that little brook and go to this little widow woman's house to be sustained there. And I don't know how long all this took, probably a year or so at least for this to take place. But I want to tell you something. Elijah was guided by the Lord. And if you and I today are ever going to make anything out of our Christian life, we too have got to be guided by the Lord and we've got to be directed by Him. It's easy to say I'm going my own way and I'm going to do my own thing. But if you and I are ever going to be anything for God, we must be guided of the Lord. And I try that. I try to let the Lord lead me and direct me in whatever I do. Lord, help us to be guided of the Lord. And then we see, we see the discipline that Elijah had from God. You know, I mean, God, dis, God, he was disciplined to follow what God said to do. He disciplined himself to go before Ahab. I don't think, you know, Elijah had boldness, but he might have questioned the Lord. Lord, you sure you want me to go tell Ahab, the king, that it is not going to rain? But he disciplined himself and said, Lord, I'm going to do it because you said to do it, I'm going to do it. So he went before the king. Then when it come time to go to the brook Cherith, he disciplined himself. Okay, Lord, you said to do it, I'm going to do it. And when the brook dried up and he disciplined himself again to do what the Lord said, Sometimes we have to discipline ourselves to do what God says to do. Sometimes we, this old flesh don't want to do what, God, what the Lord wants us to do. Amen? 
Sometimes this old flesh don't want to follow the leadership of God. That's where we must be disciplined in ourselves as believers to, be, to follow the commandments of the Lord. And then we see that Elijah experienced the provision of God. God provided him a place to stand before Ahab. God provided him with a message to give Ahab. And then God provided for him a, a, a way for him to escape the wrath of Ahab and go hide himself at the brook Cherith. While he was there, God provided for him what? Bled and, bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, provided for him by the ravens. He, he was, we see that God's provision is always just enough. Amen? God's provision is always just enough. And he provided for him. And then we see how that the brook dried up. And no doubt Elijah may have been sitting around that brook and he's watching that water. And, you know, you can live a while without food, but you can't live long without water. And that brook became a trickle. And then that brook dried up and there was nothing but rock there. And he was wondering, Lord, now what? But God, he said, the Lord would provide. So, so uh, God told him, he came to him and said, you go down to Zarephath, I've got a little woman down there, a little widow woman, that's going to supply for you. So he not knowing anything, and that's about a hundred mile journey, by the way, he lit out. And he took out, and somehow God provided. I don't know how he provided for the journey, but he did. And he got there, and that brings us to our story this morning. So after the brook failed, he come to this little woman's house. And he walked into the city, and he walked in there, and there he, he how would he know which one of the people in that city was going to be in Zarephath was going to be the one to make him a biscuit. Which one would it be? How would he know? Well, because he knew and trusted God to provide for him, and he knew if God had directed him this far, that God would direct him even further. Elijah was a man like who? Like you and I. He was a man that did what? He trusted God as you and I should trust the Lord. So I can see him looking like John uh, the Baptist as he came out of the wilderness. You know, John was dressed in, in uh, uh, he was dressed in fur and he was uh, eating locusts and wild honey and he come dressed in those skins and, and here come Elijah and I believe he probably might have looked the same after a year. He come out of there and he didn't look real good, probably didn't look real, you know, uh, uh, real, what do you call it, sophisticated. Use that big long word. And he didn't look all of that, but he came marching in and he's trying to find, he followed God all the way here and he's not going to give up now because even Elijah by now is getting hungry for the journey. And so these widow women, see now, why this woman was a widow, I do not know. I'm getting way ahead of myself, so the notes go to the wind this morning. I'm just going to preach, amen? So here's the little widow woman. He comes marching into town and he looks at that one and wonders, Lord, I wonder if that's the woman. I don't know if she's a widow or not. Did he walk up and say, ma'am, are you a widow? She might have knocked him out. Did you, how did he find that widow woman? I believe God directed him right to her. I believe God directed him past maybe a lot of people and directed him right to her. And he says, and the Lord nudged him and said, there's the one. So he said, well, Lord, how am I going to know how to, how's she going to know what? What, what am I going to do here? So Elijah walked up to her and, and uh, he said, How you doing? And uh, what was this little woman doing? She was out gathering a few sticks. And what was she going to do with them sticks? This woman was in bad shape. She was in bad shape. She was in bad shape emotionally, spiritually. She was down and out. Nothing in the world was going right for her. She was about to starve to death. She was down to that last little handful of, of meal and that last little bit of oil in that cruise. And she said, this is it, son. All hope is gone. Daddy died a long time ago, and he provided for us well while he was here. And, and now we've been in this drought, and we don't have any water much. We've got a little, but we don't have a lot of water. The crops haven't grown. We don't have anything to eat. And I don't have any way to get anything to eat. And son, we're just going to have to eat this and then lay down and wait for death to come because there's no way 
that, we, that I can provide anything else for. Hey, friend, sometimes I get that way, don't you? Sometimes we get that way where there's nothing else left. Guess what? God always comes through, amen? Don't lay down and die because things are going rough, amen? Just look for an Elijah to come along in your life, amen? So this little widow woman, <clears throat> she was there gathering sticks, and Elijah looked at her, and, and what did he say? Look back to the Word of God with us. He saw this little woman, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the, women, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now, he first he asked for water. Why? Because I believe he knew if the lady was, was willing to get him some water, then she was at least going to listen to him. Now, he didn't know she was gathering sticks to die. He didn't know she was gathering uh, sticks to eat her last meal. He was thirsty and he needed water. Now, look, it wasn't wrong for him to ask her for water because that was the natural thing for people to do in that day. Would you get me a drink of water? Would you give me a glass of water? I ask Eli once in a while. I'll forget to bring water up here. I say, Eli, will you go get me some water? Eli never says no. He says, let somebody else do it. Eli jumps up off that bench. He runs down there and he gets me some water. Amen? And it's not, it's a polite thing to do. It's the right thing to do to offer a refreshment. So she said, okay. So she was gone to get the water. And I believe while she was walking to get the water, what happened Elijah said this to her, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was gone to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. I'm hungry. Have you got a biscuit? How about bring me a biscuit to eat with that water? How about, how about going there in the kitchen where you've been uh, where you've been feeding and eating, and bring me one of them biscuits from this morning's breakfast. Will you bring me a morsel of bread in your hand? Will you just bring me a biscuit that I can have something to eat? Now, Elijah's probably thinking, well, if she does that, I know that's the way God's got to provide for me. But it didn't go as exactly as maybe Elijah thought it would. But here's what happened. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a biscuit, or I have not a cake. I have not a cake. I don't have anything, Elijah. I'll get you the water, but that's all I've got. I don't have any. I have nothing left. The cupboards are bare. But, and a handful of meal in the barrel, she said, I got that. And I got a little oil in the cruise, or in the vessel, and behold, I am gathering these two sticks. Now, that word two means several or few. So said, I'm gathering these two sticks, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start me a fire, and I'm going to bake me a cake and, and cook it in that oil, and that last little bit of meal I got, and me and my son, we're going to eat it, and that's it. We got no more. We're going to die. I have not a cake. So now the woman has to make a decision here. The polite thing to do is to make him a cake because he's asked for something, and the polite thing to do is not turn away a stranger. But what is she going to do? Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it to me, and after make for thee and for thy son. None of this makes sense. She's just got enough meal to make a cake, one cake maybe for the two of them. But he says, you just do what you said, but you go make me a cake first, and then you make it for you and your son. I thought that would be a hard thing to do, wouldn't it? She's got her last meal. This is her last meal. And I don't know if a stranger came to my door, and, and uh, knowing the way that I am, I'd probably give him my last meal. i probably, but if my son was there, my wife was there, or my daughter was there, what I'd probably do, well, I, you take my part, and my daughter, my son, my wife, they can have, they can have the, the other part, and I'll do without. But she took God at his word. She took Elijah at his word, and she was a very, a very gracious woman of faith. So what did she do? 
For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. He says, you go make me the cake and you provide for you and your son. And guess what? That meal is not going to run out or that oil, it's not going to fail until God gets, sends rain upon the earth. How many days had she been dipping out of that last little pot of meal? How long do you think, Brother Rick? How much you reckon she had put up? It had been a year since it rained, at least a year. She probably, and that's probably what all that was left in the house when her husband died. Now, I'm, I'm reading between the lines and surmising here, but that's about what I can, you know, I can think about. So she might have had, maybe she had 10 barrels of meal. Maybe she'd been left with, and maybe all that time she'd been eating, you know, waiting for it to rain, and, been eating, and she got down to this last barrel of meal. And all the time, she's, I think she's praying, Lord, you got to provide. If you don't provide, then I'm going to go hungry. My son's going to go hungry. Lord, will you please provide? Well, she got down halfway down that barrel of meal. Lord, will you please provide? I'm about out of oil. I've just got enough meal here to last us another couple of weeks. God, will you do something for me? God, will you help me? How many of you been in that shape? where you get down to the end and say, Lord, I don't know what you're going to have to help me, and you've been praying a long time, and it don't seem like God shows up, and she gets down to the last day with the last little handful of meal and with the last little bit of oil in that cruise, and she said, Lord, I've trusted you, and God, I don't know what to do. I have no other choice, but I guess, I'm just, I guess this is just the way you want this to end for me, so I'm going to get it, and I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to die. Now that's, you say, well, preacher, could, is that story real? It's in the Word of God. It's not in a parable form. Yes, it's about a real man. It's about real people. Yes, it's a real story. So, here we are. Here comes Elijah along. To add to her problem, somebody else is wanting her food. But I find nowhere in the Scripture does she complain because I believe she's a godly woman. I believe she loves the Lord. And I believe that, that, you know, knowing maybe knowing by the way he looked or by the way he talked, maybe knowing that he was a prophet and her knowing that she was going to try to do the will of God. So she gets, what does she do? She goes in there and she, she goes in there and she bakes him a biscuit. Will somebody bake me a biscuit? And so she went in there and she baked him a biscuit. And she went and did according, verse 15, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Now, I'm, I'm thinking here probably two years thereabouts that they ate. Listen what happened. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Now this gets exciting to me right here because I see the miracle that God performed. Elijah didn't perform the miracle. Elijah was simply obedient to God and going to ask this widow woman for, for uh, a meal because God promised Elijah that he had a widow woman prepared and ready to... Uh, provide for him and for to sustain him until the drought was over. But the little widow woman, I don't know how much God, had, I don't know how much the Lord had told her. Apparently she didn't know a whole lot because it took total faith on her behalf to go in there and make Elijah a little cake, make him a biscuit. It took total faith on her to, to know that was God if, if you promise you take care of it, I'm going to do what you say till the last breath I draw, till my last meal, I'm going to follow you. And so no matter if it meant that it took bread out of her own mouth, she did what God said to do. And then, you know, after she probably made all the biscuits, made all the biscuits that she wanted to make, and Elijah ate all the bread that he wanted to eat, They had water, and she got to think, you know, that made more, that handful of meal made more than it usually does. 
My son's not hungry. I'm not hungry. Elijah, you're not hungry. I'm glad we enjoyed our last meal. Maybe that's what she thought. But remember what Elijah said, that meal ain't going to wear out. That oil ain't going to run out. And I believe the next day when she got up to go in there and make a biscuit, and she probably looked in that barrel and all she seen was empty. And said, well, Lord, I'm going to get me some meal out of that barrel. And she reached in there and guess what? There's meal in that barrel. Lord, that wasn't there yesterday. And she put it in her little thing to make. Lord, it's two. I'm going to get another. Went down there and got another handful of that meal, brought it out. About that time, she's about ready to shout. Maybe she's thinking, who put the oil, who put the, the meal in my barrel last night? That's the way I think. Who did it? Before I think to give God the praise sometimes, I think, well, who did this? Now, I've told this story, and I'll tell it real quickly again to make a point. My wife and I were living in a little trailer over on, uh, where's that at? Yeah, Adam Till Road over there. We lived over there, raised our two kids till they got, uh, you know, till they got five and six or something like that. What was it? And then we moved out and got into our house. But we we lived over there. We happy as we could be. We didn't have a lot of room, but we had a lot of closeness. Amen. And uh, we lived in that. And one winter, things was rough. And I don't remember what all went on, but things was rough that winter. And it'd been cold, and and we'd had to burn a lot of fuel oil and. And uh, I got to thinking, you know, I know we're getting close on fuel. I tried to keep it pushed to the back of my mind so that, you know, so that I wouldn't worry about that. Well, it's, I don't know, it's middle of January or something. It's cold, and I said, I better go check and just see. Oh, so I'd start making some plans. And I went in there and got my little stick, and I run it down in there and thump, and heard that hollow sound. I know there ain't much in there. And I pull it back up, and there's about that much on that stick. So I know that's about a week's worth. Of all. So I began to pray, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do here. We're broke. We, we're, we're living hand to mouth right now, and I don't have any money. And no proud me, I'm not going to ask anybody for it. See, that's the way I am. I'm proud. I'm not going to. I've learned a little better than that. Did you got $1,000 on that? <laughs> but <laughs> there's a joke about that, too, but I won't tell it. So I went back and, and I told my wife, I said, we, honey, we got to have some fuel on. She, you know what she said? I don't worry about it. That's been her attitude our whole marriage. Don't worry about it. I've done enough for both of us. She prays about it. I worry about it. So I think, well, next week come along, I still ain't got no way to buy fuel. I'm trying to figure out something. So I went back out there. I better check it again. I went back there and I stuck my little thing down in there and Pulled it back out. It ain't changed none. I know it's cold. I used a lot of fuel. But it's still that much in the bottom. I remember this. So the day I die, I remember this. And so I go another week, and I go back out there to check it again. And there was snow on the ground. I remember that. And I took my stick, and I pushed it down there, and it shot back out of the barrel. And I thought, what in the world? And you know what the first thing I thought of was? Somebody spilled my oil barrel up with water. Now see, that old me of little faith. But ain't that about the way we are? Oh no, somebody spilled it up with water now and, I, and my furnace ain't going to work. So I pulled the stick back. I, you know, smells like oil. And that thing was up within that far of the top of that oil barrel. That far. And it's all. You're talking about a preacher scratching his head. They was, now remember now, they were snow on the ground. They weren't no tracks nowhere near my oil tank. I went and I said, in the end, see, here's the way we are. I thought, boy, somebody's messed up. They filled up the wrong tank. <laughs> so I went to the neighbor. Did you have oil in your field? No. Went to that. Did you have? Nobody. And I called a couple of people, did you have oil? But no. I ain't got a clue this day how that oil got in that tank, but I don't believe there's ever oil truck there. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe God said, you said, now God wouldn't do that. Hey, I'm telling you what he did for this little widow woman with the meal and the oil 
He's still doing today if we'll just trust him. God, I learned a valuable lesson, amen. No matter how dark it may be, how gloomy it may be, there is coming a day when God's going to answer your prayer and God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, don't ever ask me who put the oil in the barrel. I don't know. I know God put it in the barrel. And it wasn't water. It was oil. Because I don't know. I, I don't, you know, and I'm sure I did, but I don't remember buying any more oil. I know I didn't that winter. And I don't remember the next winter. Hey, man, it's getting to be more of a blessing now than it ever has been because I don't remember when I bought oil again. Hey, man. I just know this, God didn't let the oil run out. And this little widow woman, she went over there and she dipped in there. Boy, she gets in there. Hey, Amen. But you know, I don't believe that there was ever any more meal in that. I don't, I don't, believe, I don't believe that meal bucket ever got filled up. I believe there was always enough in there for her every day, though, to dip out of there. I believe there was always enough oil in that little crew she was using to cook it in and to mix it with that every day I believe it was all just there. And the longer she went, it become, it become habit for her to go in there. And every day, well, I know what God's done. He's provided again and reach in there by faith and get her out. For two years, she was sustained. Elijah was sustained. Her family was provided for because... She had faith in God, and because Elijah, now if Elijah had never went there, I don't know what the would have happened. If Elijah had been disobedient, I don't know what would have happened. If she had been disobedient, I don't know what would have happened. But I know one thing, somebody, God provided somebody to make Elijah a biscuit. Now there may be somebody that the Lord wants you to make a biscuit for, that the Lord wants you to help provide for. If that's the case, amen, be sure to make somebody a biscuit, amen. Dr. Harold Seitler, I don't know if any of you know him or not, but Dr. Harold Seitler, he said, if you know that anybody's mad at you or anybody that's got anything ill to say about you, he said, just go bake them a cake and take it to them and leave it with them, amen. Oh, hallelujah to God, friend. God's got a way of speaking to our hearts, and God's got a way of helping us and God's got a way of providing for us. And all we have to do, you know what we have to do as believers? Just be faithful to God. Amen. Be faithful to God and somebody will bake you a biscuit. <clears throat> I, had about, I had about six things here that I was going to give to you, but I've done gave them to you in a roundabout way. Let me read you this verse of Scripture. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand, with the right hand of my righteousness. Elijah had faith. He had faith to take God at his word. And we know that through that faith we saw that God provided for him an un, an un, uh, 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 a supply that would never run out, an unfailing supply. We see that there was the promise of it in verse number 9. What God said he's going to do, God's going to do. Amen. It lasted long as it needed to last. What God said would last, would last. And I'm telling you, friend, God provided, and God is still providing for his people. Now, I don't know what kind of shape you're in today. I know what kind of shape I'm in. But I don't know what kind of shape you're in. I know what kind of shape some of you are in. But there's people here in this building that's suffering and facing things that I may have never faced and you may have never faced. But I'll tell you something. You just stay with God. You just be encouraged in the Lord and somebody's going to make you a biscuit. Amen. Somehow, some way, God's going to provide. You say, well, preacher, that happens to everybody else. It don't ever happen to me. Amen. It may, you may not think it doesn't, but you think back in your life and you remember how you got things you didn't know how you got. Has God provided for you? Somewhere or the other, God's provided. Has he let you down yet? Is he going to let you down now? No. Because he is a God of provision. Oh, Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful 
things. Thy counsels, O Lord, o Lord of old, are faithful and true. Somebody make you a bishop. God's got a way of providing. You have a need this morning, God's got a way of providing. Let me end with this. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, your need is salvation. Your need is to be born again of the Spirit of God. That's the greatest need of all mankind is to know that they're saved by the grace of God and know that when they die, they're going to heaven. If you're not saved, don't expect the supply of God except for salvation. The promise of my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory are, is to save people, but God's promise to the lost that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you happen to be here this morning and you're lost without God, there'd never be a greater day than today to come to know the Lord. If you're here this morning and, and uh, you need the help of God, you may think you're at the end of the barrel. You may think that you're at the end of your walk. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You stay with God. You be faithful to God. I believe the widow woman was faithful to God till the very end, and God provided. You be faithful to the Lord. You be faithful to the house of God. You be faithful to him, and God will be faithful to you. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray. God, in the invitation, God, touch hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. While every